Hi everyone, and welcome to AutoCAD. My name is Ari, and I'm an AutoCAD professional with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn how to create and modify wipeouts. We can find the wipeout tool by going to our Annotate tab in our ribbon, and here it is in the markup panel right here. We can also type WI, and it'll pop up in our command line. So when we use wipeouts, we have a few options. We can simply begin using it, or we can look in our command line and see that we have frames and polyline as options. Let's use it first, and then we'll get into the other options. So I'm going to specify my first point, just like AutoCAD is telling me. So I'll click here. If my goal is to hide this window, then I can do so very easily. Now, the only issue right now with creating a wipeout from scratch like this is that I can't make perfectly straight lines. If I hold the shift key, that doesn't work and control doesn't toggle it. So for now, I'm just going to make a rough wipeout just like this. And even though ortho's on, these lines can't really be straight right now. And so I'll show you guys how we can make properly straight wipeouts very soon. So I've just clicked four times in all the locations. If I'm done, I just need to press enter. Also, I can type the C key for close. And if I didn't like any of the points that I made, I can use the undo key, so I'll type U and then enter, to get rid of the last point that I created. In this case, I do want this point here, and now I'm going to click C or type C and then press the enter key. So there's the wipeout. Now, you'll notice that we can still see the border of this wipeout, and most of the time, we don't really want to see the border of the wipeout, especially when we print and we submit this as a set of drawings, for example. So I'm going to select this wipeout, and basically, can't really modify it too much right here. If I right-click on it, for example, we don't really have options to modify the wipeout. So instead, we may as well just make the wipeout properly from scratch. So let's go back to our wipeout function. And now we have some options down here. Let's look at frames first. Frames are essentially the border of the wipeout. So if I move my mouse away from the command line and I click somewhere, it allows me to use those command line options right here. So I can toggle this from on to off. So if I turn this off, now there won't be a border for my future wipeouts. So if I quickly make one just like this and then press enter, the border is essentially invisible, but the wipeout is still there. So if I mouse over it, I can see a nice silhouette of it just so I can don't lose it too easily. So there's our wipeout. Let's now get rid of this one, and let's go back to making a wipeout, and let's go back to frames. So the other option down here is display but not plot. So that means that we can still identify our wipeouts, but when we plot them, it'll be as if they're turned off. So that's very, very nice and useful if we want that. So let's press escape, let's make another wipeout, and let's click on polyline this time. What it's asking us is to select a closed polyline. There's a few nuances to this, and I'll go over that right now. So we can use the polyline tool in order to do this, but we have to be very careful when using it. For example, if I just use the tool like this, let me turn ortho off so I can make any shape, then if I try to click on the grip at the end to close it, I will not be able to use a wipeout and associate a wipeout with this polyline. Instead, I need to press the C key so I can close the polyline automatically. Now that I've done that, I can go back to annotate, wipe out, and then I can go to polyline. And once I select this, I get the proper dialog which says erase polyline, yes or no. So you could erase the polyline if you wanted to. I'm going to say yes, just to show you guys. And now this has become essentially a mask. And we can prove that by opening up properties. And there it is. This is our wipeout, which I like to call a mask as well. Very good, so that's how we can use polylines and we just have to use that close command. Now, any other kind of shape will work except for circles. So rectangles and polygons, no problem. But if I try to take a regular circle such as this one and then I try to apply a wipeout to it, I'm gonna get a bit of an error. And the error is here, it says select a closed polyline. So even though this is a closed polyline, it's not really a polyline and circles that are made with the circle and radius and diameter tools are essentially different kinds of shapes that don't really have sides. So they have infinite sides. And that's a bit of a problem for AutoCAD. Now, there is a great way workaround for this. So I'll show you right now. All we need to do is go to the polygon tool. So here it is. And we're going to emulate a circle. So it's going to ask us how many sides this polygon has. And AutoCAD has a limit to the amount of sides that you can place. And so that limit is 1,024. 
So if we use this and press enter, now it's asking us to make our polygon. And when we do, we can choose inscribed or circumscribed. It doesn't really matter. Let's do circumscribed. There it is. This essentially looks just like a circle. Now, if I click here and if I click on the circle, it has way too many grips, uh, roughly 1,024 of them to be exact. <laughs> so this isn't really a true circle. It is close though. So if you do need to apply a wipeout to a circular area, just use a polygon and turn it into a circle because now if we go to annotate and wipeout, press P for polyline. And if we click on this, now we get the proper dialogue. Let's say no this time. Now we should have two objects here. Yep, we have both objects, the polyline and the wipeout. And so that's how you can essentially apply a wipeout to a circular object or to a circular area. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial on how to create wipeouts in AutoCAD. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.